Hello everyone and welcome back to Crayon Code. Today we're going to build a nice little info tooltip with CSS clip path and a great hover effect. So let's get started right away with some markup. So first thing we need is that we have a div with the class tooltip. Yeah, one oh too much. And inside that tooltip we're going to have a link because I want this to be focusable and this link is the actual tooltip trigger which is just going to have uh, yeah let's actually put an icon in there from font awesome want this to have the fixed width style and it's an exclamation mark because it's something important we may want to inform the user about so this way and next to the trigger we are going to put a tiff a diff that takes the class the wrapper class so it's actually going to wrap the actual tooltip and there we have a heading because it's simply the tooltip title inside the title let's actually put a, a nice headline heads up and next to the title or more or less below it we're going to have a tooltip content which is the actual text that tells the user something they might want to know. So that's all that we need for the markup. You can see it's still uh, yeah, slightly messed up, so let's get this taken care of. So let's start with styling from the outside to the inside. So we take the outermost class and let's first define a few variables for easier customization. Let's define a background color, which is this little, uh, a slightly darker one, a foreground color, which is a slightly faded white such that it's not that extreme and yeah let's use it a highlight color 008 AFF next to the color styling we need some yeah sizing let's determine the size to be 1.25 rems we are going to have an outer padding that is simply going to be yeah slightly half of the of the size itself and we will later need to shift everything so we introduce a two variable, actually I think we only need one here because it will be uniformly shifted. So we just need one, yeah, perfect. Good. Let's, this one is very important because we want the positioning to work later on. So that's why we're going to put position relative on the tooltip itself. And let's put a drop shadow on the tooltip itself. That is two pixels shifted right and down and is blurred by two pixels. And yeah, let's actually do it that way that we have um, a slightly darker color, but faded very transparently with only 20%. Good. Okay, now for the tooltip content itself, we are going to want, you can see that it's quite white because the text is not being wrapped and you actually want to fix that by setting a min width of 15 rems and a max width of 20 rems so depending on the content and um, yeah it's good to have a little bit of space between the heading and the content itself but not that much which is why I reduced the margin top to 0.5 rems and now yeah let's actually get taken care of the trigger which is just going to be an inline grid and I only need the grid for easier centering because I want to use the place content center property to make yes the CSS grid to center ever the, the exclamation mark horizontally and vertically. And now let's actually define the width and the height, which is just going to use the variable size. And let's actually make that visible by setting the background color using the BG color variable. And now we can see that this is actually a nice, I have a typo. Yeah, there must be some sort of typo. Yeah, here, tool tip. Let's quickly check tool clip. This is also one. <laughs> so tool tip, tool tip. I seem to have trouble with this word typing. Good. Okay, now you can see that this is actually a square. So let's make this, I would want this to be a, a, a nice little circle. So we set the border radius to 50% to make this a perfect circle. Yeah, missed the R here. So perfect, good. The color is not very well readable, so we're going to apply the foreground color directly. 
and I really want to prevent any text decoration on that link because it's a link tag so we want a text decoration to be none and the exclamation mark is a little bit too big so let's actually use the variable size as a font size but divide it by two which will ensure that as soon as we scale the size variable up it also the scales the exclamation mark very well very good so now i want to actually have it to stand out a little bit more so let's put a box shadow on it but not in the classical sense of a box shadow but more in terms of a shine outside so we are going to take a slightly faded color and you can see that it's putting a nice little ring around it so yeah that actually looks good so for later i want to have a transition delay of 500 milliseconds and i want the following properties to be transitionable which means that we're going to have the background color transitionable and the box shadow as well but this was a little bit faster in transition so but we were using the same easing this is going to work i think yeah very nice now let's take care of the wrapper this one is going to be positioned absolutely because I want it to be behind the eye and as soon as we hover the eye it will, will um, expand and reveal the entire tooltip and for that we actually need to be needed to be positioned absolutely because we also don't want the tooltip to shift the layout because it needs to be expandable but never shift any other content so if we put it at position absolute we will not interfere with any other content so let's actually now get to the work of positioning let's say that we need the offset variable here so it should now shift upwards and again a typo here position so yeah very good and of course we want to shift everything to the left a little bit more exactly by the same extent like we shifted upwards so now but Let's also take care of the Z index, which we will put to minus one because we want this to be behind the I symbol because um, when it expands, we don't want to cover the symbol itself, the trigger. So that's why we put it behind the trigger with Z index minus one. Okay, now let's, let's actually make it a little bit more visually appealing by using some colors. That's color. And there we're going to use the FG color here. Good, okay, now, yeah, spacing and everything is still a little messed up. Let's also use some border radius, which is going to be the same as the size here, because we want it to match um, the circle of the trigger. And let's take actually care of the padding, where we have defined the outer padding variable, which we're going to use just here. So everything is a little bit more shifted, very good. Let's also put a little bit of a box shadow on it, and this one is going to be uh, the first one is an inset box shadow, where I also want to put a, yeah, a glowing frame around it, which means that we're going to use the same configuration here, but we are going to use a slightly faded version of the highlight color, so you can see we have a slight border around it now that does also not interfere with the content because it's a box shadow, and I want to make it to, yeah, stand out a little bit more, so that's why I'm going to put a box shadow, a starker one actually, 0.3 very nice so yeah you can see we have a slight shadow that shifts it up a little bit more very good now the heading still looks a little bit messed up so let's actually take care of that one missing p i want it to be on the same height with the eye which is where we're going to set display in line and yeah let's actually set the margin left where we are going to use a calculated expression we are going to shift it to the very right of the exclamation mark which means that we have to use the size variable to shift it to the right and i want to have a little bit more spacing in between so let's also use the outer padding here to shift a little bit more right and let's see i think there's still some margin and padding interfering yeah much better this way Good. font size is still a little bit too large so we're also going to use the size to match with the eye and let's reduce the font weight down to 400 yeah to make it a little bit nicer very good okay now we have the actual styling and let's take care of the hover effect which means that we are 
going to set a clip path on the wrapper and this one's going to be a circle and this default state is the closed state which means that we're going to shift the circle to the position of the exclamation mark so it's already still being behind it and as soon as we hover the exclamation mark the entire thing will expand in the circle to, to reveal it to the user so let's use the variable size divided by 2.5 because this is the radius so it's a little bit smaller than the actual trigger size and we're going to put the circle at now it gets a little bit more tricky let's use the size variable divided by two because we need a radius here and we need it to sh be shifted by the offset extent to the right because this is the right radius and you can see it's quite nicely below the center so the x coordinate is still very good and i think the same will go for the y coordinate very nice so completely disappears in closed state and let's actually now take care of the hover state itself which means that we are going to have another selector when the tooltip itself is being hovered and we want to expand the tooltip wrapper so we're going to adapt the clip path to be a circle again because we want it to be morphable because only then if it's the same shape, the browser will start morphing the tooltip, uh, the, the, cl the clip path. And yeah, let's actually use 100% as a radius. So we want to expand the entire thing. And as soon as the user hovers, let's shift the circle of the, the center of the circle to the middle of the item. And let's see if that actually already works. Not yet. Yeah, of course. Again, a typo here. Circle. Okay, si sizing is correct, but I think I messed something up with the transitions. Yeah, of course, forgot it here. The clip path property also needs to be set to be transitionable. So we're going to use also the ease, in, ease out function here. And now let's see. Yeah, very nice. You can see that it nicely expands and collapses down to the eye. And now to make it work a little bit better on mobile devices, because you don't have a cursor there, but you can tap things which means that as soon as we tap the trigger we also want it to expand and therefore we are going to put a focus within pseudo selector so whenever there's an element inside the tool to being focused by tapping it we are also going to expand the shape which makes it work nicely on mobile devices as well I think I missed something up again. Focus within there. And now if I click it, it keeps open. And as soon as I click somewhere else, it uh, collapses back again. So even on desktop devices, I think this is quite nice such that you don't always have to stay on the tooltip for actually being able to read it. Very good. Now the, the eye, I think, still disappears a little bit too much. So let's actually... Yeah, give it a little bit more color. So whenever the tooltip is hovered, I want to target the tooltip trigger. And the same goes for the focus within selector. Let's actually transition the background color to the accent color. Yeah, very nice. And I want to preserve actually the, actually the shine around it. So Let's take a box shadow and use a slightly faded version. I think it's the same as the border again. So yeah, I messed something up here again. Yeah, very nice. And I think, yeah, let's actually apply a transition delay of zero milliseconds because we have been setting it to 500 milliseconds before. Yeah, that looks much better with the transition delay. Yeah, and that's already it. I hope you enjoyed creating this nice little tooltip with me. Make sure you'd like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next episode.